Hello, it's time. It's lower league look time. This week we think about charity. Mainly Harry McCurdy's. Most sports stars are paid to send out tweets. However Harry is a different gravy and pays £1,000 of his own money just to call a referee. See you next Tuesday, Mr. McCurdy. We salute you. It's the lower league look. 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 gentlemen welcome to episode 11 of the lower league look in case you're wondering what grant is doing over there that is what you will get if you buy grant two drinks on a night out um no as you can see grant he's got his bond op shirt mine hasn't arrived yet um, but it will be before the end of the season so grant it looks beautiful tell tell us about it tell us about the quality and the, I... the, the craftsmanship and is it really that orange by the way, it is very, very orange. Yeah. I, I forgot that I'd ordered it, to be fair. <laughs> Women came to the door earlier on today, and I was like, oh, who's this? Dogs going mental went down. I'm like, what is this? What is this parcel? And it said sports something on it. I was like, oh, I know what this is. And I goes, oh, thank God we didn't record the podcast yesterday, and we're recording yeah. it tonight. Because I can wear it on podcast and don't need to wait a week. Quality of the shirt, it's great. Love it. Nice collar. Collar separate to the actual top itself. Really like it. Hummel oh, top. Just, what you got? You got a shirt and then a collar. Yeah, shirt and a collar. No, it's like uh, no, the, totally the different. Se- different separate. material. A uh, different material. You know, some I of like, them you get I really. Like, yeah, I like really... the Hummel, Hummel's tops are great. They're, yeah, they're very nice. I would definitely. Like Definitely transferred badge. It's not stitched on, um, but it's almost like a material. It's good. I like it's it. Nice. Well, the good thing is, Chris, I, it's, a, it's a good job you do like it because we'll go straight into it. <laughs> Looks like you're going to be getting yourself one. Uh, for anyone who's just started watching us recently, at the beginning of the season, we we started this when Oldham were rock bottom and looked like they were going out of the football league, and we had an Oldham fan on, and we all made bets with this Oldham fan. Me and Grant made the bet that if Mike Fondop scored in his first three games, we would buy an Oldham shirt. By the way, the shirt isn't signed. Um, I spoke to the club. I actually spoke to him earlier today, Grant, but because Fondop's injured, he's not been out of the club anyway. That's We can't. It's either we wait until the end of the season and then there's no point, um, or we just have to get the shirts ourselves. It depends yeah. if he's being kept it, on by Oldham exactly. or not, or is it going to be part of the retained list? Yeah, I think a big part of their retained list for next season depends what league they're going to be in yeah. and who the manager's going to be going forward because I, I, I think change. it's unlikely that it's going to be Sheridan, but I still think he might make the decisions on the retained list. So we don't know if Fondop will be part of the part of the um, squad for Oldham next season. Well, on the, on the Sheridan thing, he's he has confirmed he's not staying on. I think, you know, the Chris, the Oldham fan that we had on, has, has said that to us. He said that he's staying till the end of the season. I expect he'll move upstairs. I think he'll stay at Oldham, but I don't think he'll be in charge. Uh, but the other side of the bet was Chris, who doesn't like uh, Sheridan at all, made a bet that if he keeps them up, he will buy um, a, a shirt with Sir Sheridan on the back. Sir Sheridan Number 6, was six. it? Number 6, because it was his it's sixth bit... time in charge. Yeah, because it would be his sixth time in charge. Um I think I mean to be fair, you can't you can't um you can't say that he's done anything but a, a, and a fantastic job at, at Oldham so far. I know they went through that that barren spell where they lost what was it five, six in a row, but the last two games, uh they the commitment wise, I watched their game against Leighton Orient and they were just putting everyone behind the ball. They really wanted that. They wanted that performance. I thought it was interesting, by the way. Was uh, Sheridan's interview after the game? I don't know if you've picked. I don't know if you're using this. Are you using this for your yems? If not, then that's great. No, we, we, no, we haven't got a yems. Don't have one. Okay, that's fine. But he was like saying to you know he was he was complaining about the players sliding on their knees, celebrating and stuff. He's listen. We still got a massive job to do here, and I thought he was absolutely spot on with what he said. You know, just just bring the players back down to earth and go. Listen, we still got a massive job here. To do, and and they have. I mean, obviously, winning at Stevenage is a huge, huge result, and obviously in midweek as well, late in Orient two nil. Uh, they had a very similar goal to 
what Bradford did where the keeper came up for the corner and they scored. However, you know, you can't knock the players' dedications for the cause. And obviously, Sheridan is creating that atmosphere. He's creating that that buzz in the club. And you can't really knock it. You can't knock it at all. I mean, we said before the games that this week, these two games, they had to get four points out of these two games to have any sort of chance in staying up at all. Yeah. I, I was doubtful that they were going to do it. I um, but they've went absolutely smashed out of the park, and the shed erection turned into the dead erection is now turned back so into a bit direction. of a semi. Yeah, it has, yeah. <laughs> it, and it has, a little bit of blood pulsing. And, uh, <laughs> and let's put it this way: I have been looking at shirts today. Uh, I really like the home shirt. It's, it's a really nice shirt. When I, I was over it's there, beautiful. I, 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 I really look at it, and it, it's. Do you know? I think, I think it's quite difficult when you've got colours such as blue. It's it's difficult to make a really hideous blue kit. I think I think they always mm-hmm. have sort of a nice way, a nice look to them. I mean, Chris, ours. We've got some colours that we can only do so many things with. You can do yeah. anything with a blue kit, and it will it will mm-hmm. have a, a, a sort of a you'll, you'll know. Grant blue and white, you can't really go too you can't far go wrong. wrong. You can't go wrong um, with that. You can't. And, you can't. Definitely. But let's not. not let's not get ahead of ourselves with all them. They've a got lot a really, of work to do. They've they got do, they three do. really tough games coming up. They've got Port Vale um, at the weekend. Then they've got Northampton, and then they've got Forest Green. Um, so they've got three really, really hard games, which with teams that are all fighting for the top spots as well. So these are games where everyone's fighting for something. Yeah. So you, I, I will expect these games to be some of the more competitive games over the next couple of weeks because everyone's playing for something. It's not like a dead rubber like you've got a lot of teams playing for now. It's uh, it's going to be an interesting <clears throat> few weeks because I mean, we're going to come on to the next seven days sort of later in the in the podcast. But we've we've focused. It seemed to be earlier, sort of as we were doing these episodes, that every episode seemed to be focused around the bottom end because it seemed to be that all the teams at the bottom end have big games at the same time. This week it's the opposite. It's the top end where the big games are, um, and everyone seems to be in a, a game that could realistically go either way. Um, but before we do that, one thing I want to touch on, Chris, I know you're going to giggle on, at that. Touch on, touch on. Um, <laughs> so, by the way, we're not laughing at, at you just saying having a touch on. No, no, it's because I, I say it all the time. and I know he I says say it, it all the time. <laughs> right, Chris, we'll touch on that in a minute, don't worry. Um, so let's, <laughs> let's, talk about, let's talk about yesterday. Obviously, today's Monday. We're recording on the Monday. Yesterday, the, 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 you know, the cup final, the EFL trophy, Sutton, Robert. What a game. What a Phenomenal game. Phenomenal game. The what best game, game of the year in that competition was the oh final. Oh, my God. What a game. And you know what? And You know what? That's saying something if the final was the best game because our game against... Rotherham was also a cracker as well. It was a great game, but but the the final was just yeah, start to finish. Phenomenal. I was devastated for Sutton. <sighs> Same because ninety sixth minute and thing is you saw it coming. You could see it building. You could see that Sutton's legs were giving up. You could see that Rotherham. I mean, we, we've said about them before. The top of the league, top of League One. They are going to go up into the championship. They, they look like a championship side already. They're going to have to make some changes to stay there. But that's you, you saw the gulf um, in the the, the the extra time. Yeah, definitely did. And obviously, I I, compl- I do agree with you as much as I absolutely test Rotherham United, and I do. I absolutely hate them. Um, but I tell you what, for, I think Sutton really put the feelers up them. And I tell you what, it makes do you know what Sutton. This year, and we haven't talked enough about Sutton this season. We haven't. I we have. have. Yeah, you have. <laughs> we have a little bit, but I don't think we've talked enough uh, about and about them. And I think that the performance yesterday was phenomenal. They, I can't remember his name. The striker who scored um, is some some player. Um, I don't know if anyone could quickly check for me who it is who scored the goals. Um, for, for Sutton, yeah, for Sutton, 
Sutton was uh, Wilson or Phenomenal. Eastman. Eastman is some player, man. I, I think Wilson's good, but I think Eastman is some player. Uh, I'd be very surprised if he's not in League One next season. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually ends up going up a little bit higher. I think that, you know, that the, they've got the same team pretty much as they had in the, in the, in the you know, the conference, whatever league you want to call it. Um, no matter where they finish now, they are going to finish in the top, top half. They've had a phenomenal season. And, you know, to go against Rotherham, who've got all the money, all the money and, and, and the players and quality that they've got, and Sutton really put them close, really did. And I, I tell you it's what, when that's the last couple of weeks or the last maybe the last couple of months, that Sutton are, I think they're a great team, one of the best teams that we've played this season. They're a big team, they're a strong team. They've got everything you want, and it's just keeping that consistency going. And they've had a yeah, I, they've had a phenomenal season, and I expected them to have a phenomenal season. Yeah, they they um. They, they're going to be buzzing. They can't be disheartened by that yesterday. Now, the only thing that confused me was that people were leaving early. Um, people were leaving in extra time. And I think that for me, you know, you, no one, they didn't expect to get there. I think you stay till the end. You're at a cup final. You're at Wembley. You stay till the end. You lose, we, I mean, we lost 5 0 at a cup final. You stay till the end because you've got to show your players that appreciation. At mm. the end, the journey's over. Yes, you've lost. Yeah. Fuck me, you got there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Completely agree with that too. And I think that you know you're right. And it's it's the fact that you know you you let those players know that no matter what has happened, even though you've just lost four two against a team in a higher league who are you know fucking flying, yeah. um, you you let them know. Wow, thank you so much for what yeah. you've done this season. Total yeah. show of appreciation, and the players deserve it. And it's not all for them yet either. Let's be honest, the three points off the playoffs with a game in hand. Mm. <laughs> it's not yeah. over. You know, we've, we, we've seen it happen. Um, so, look, we, 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 we're trying to get a, a Sutton fan, and I actually spoke with um, Sutton have a podcast. They have their own team podcast, um, and I spoke to one of the lads from that. He's confirmed that they are... We were going to do it, but obviously when we were going to record last night, I said there's no Terrible way... Time. Yeah, yeah. So there's absolutely no way you're recording on the night of the game after it's happened. Um, it's just an absolute no go. Um, but we are going to get him on. The lad's name's Mike. Um, he said he's definitely, uh, definitely up for it. So we're going to try and get him on. Hopefully for next week, and we'll, we'll we'll have a chat with him. But moving on, we did another episode last week. Uh, Grant, you weren't here. Did you like your hat, Grant? First of all, ah, oh, the hat was great. <laughs> I loved it. I like that it stayed on for the whole episode as well. Fucking too right it did, Grant. Yeah. It took ages to do that. Did yeah. you notice it was in Scunthorpe's colours as well? It was in Scunthorpe's colours as well. That was accidental you know, at first. Do you know who do you know who pointed it out to me? It, it wasn't it was a uh, it was my wife that pointed out. She went, Oh, I really liked your hat, and I went, What hat? So then I then Wait, how did you not know? We told you to look no, out didn't. for it. No, we but told I hadn't, told you hadn't watched it. Then. I hadn't watched it at that point. Oh, yet. right. I thought you meant you'd watched it and just not noticed. It. No, I mean, it happens <laughs> right at the start. It's got a wee noise That's, and it that comes was my on. Point. Yeah, but that I was tell my you point. what, you're never signing off the podcast again. Do you know what? I forgot that that was a thing. And it weren't until Chris said, Oh, you need to do the sign off. Grant normally does the <laughs> sign off. I was like, I terrible. don't know what goes on terrible, here. Terrible, terrible. But do you know what? No, it don't matter because do you know what? It's it's about the effort. Yeah. And it's not what it is. And do you know it's what? Do you effort. know what, Grant? It's about I, Grant I, not doing anything, going away. From yeah, you but, it, but here's, my here's my response to it, Grant. I did the opening that night and I think it's only fair that Chris should have stepped up and done the exit, but he didn't. He just left me to it. He just, you know, he pushed me under the bus because he brought it up, shoved yeah. me out into traffic and just left me to it. Done. That so, was it, done. So, but talking about last week's episode, the response that we've had has been ridiculous. Um, obviously, we've had some some negatives, but they're not really negatives about what we did because we didn't we didn't do anything. We All we did was give a platform for some Scunthorpe fans to speak. Um, and the people that were complaining, saying, oh, I didn't like that Scunthorpe fan, or I didn't like that Scunthorpe fan, they were welcome to come on as well, but they didn't. You know, I've replied to every single person who slagged it off and said, 
why don't you come on for part two? And there's a matter, the amount of people that have just ignored me. You know, if you're going to complain, come on and complain. We're not bothered. You know, we don't take anything personal. But the episode and then the fallout. Now, we don't think that we have anything to do with nothing. No. We're not. We're not no. stupid. No. It just timed so perfect that the morning we released at midnight and at 10 a.m. the next morning, the owner of Scumfop stepped down. Um, I mean, where do you think I was? Grant was down there. Grant was at his door. Um, <laughs> Grant was at his door. That was the show that he went to see, um, <laughs> making him listen live. But no, no, like we, we've got no, no unreal. We made a joke. I made a joke on the Scumfort page, and one of the Scumfort podcasts really, really got pissy about it with me um, because I said, "Oh, did we do something?" And he was like, "No, you didn't." I'm like, it's a joke. Come yeah. on. We don't really think that we did anything. We just timed it perfectly. Um, but Peter Swan, it's taken him until last night. So what's that? That's five, four days, four days, five days um, to come out and, and give a statement. Now, I thought it was weird. So see when he stood down, he stood down on the Friday? Was it the, no, it was a Thursday, wasn't it? He stood down it Thursday. Thursday. So he, stood we, down, he stood down the we morning. We recorded the Wednesday. We heard the Thursday he stood down. And then they said, oh, Peter Swan stood down with immediate effect. Um, Lee Turnbull's coming in as a CEO. There will be a statement released at the weekend by Peter Swan. I was like, why the weekend? Why not release with your resignation? You'd think if they'd planned this much, you'd already had this pre-written. Yeah, so some things... Maybe it wasn't his decision in, in in a sense. Obviously, I know he's got to make that final decision, but when you've got board members, we, we were told, not by the lads that were on the podcast last week, it wasn't them, but another Scunny fan, and to be fair, a couple of Scunny fan fans contacted us and told us that another main board member was stepping down within a few days. Maybe that forced it. I'm getting feedback, by the way. I can hear feedback coming from someone, or from I can hear feedback in your side, Christopher. It's not me, I don't think. <laughs> it's gone now. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll keep that in. I like it. Um, we love feedback. We always say it. We always say it. We always say, "Give us feedback." Boom, we got some. Um, but yeah, the, the, and then the statements come out last night. You, you've both read it. For me, for someone who said, "Let's have a th- let's count this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine paragraphs. He said nine paragraphs, and he said absolutely fuck all. <laughs> there's not, there's no, nothing is clear for that for what he's what his idea is. Um, he still owns the ground. He's he's left the club, or, he, or he's technically left the club in a position where they've got no ground. That's his. The training facilities are his. What, where do they go from this? You know, an owner coming in to buy it. What are they buying? Because you're essentially buying a brand that's about to drop out of professional football. It, it's a really odd one because from what I got from it, and I'm I'm reading through it just now, is all it is is he's just saying I financially supported the club. This is money that's been involved in it. I'm not. I've not been looking for a new owner, but I'm talking to groups who are interested now. That that's it. So it's like he's saying he wants. He's going to keep ownership, but he's looking for somebody to invest. Mm. Yeah, I, I think if we look at it, I mean, obviously for Scunthorpe fans, for the for the fans that I've talked to, um, and I'll go into in a, in in a little bit about what I'm going to do on Saturday. Um, there was the excitement. For them, from the ones that I've talked to, the fact that he was stepping down. However, he still owns everything. What that means is that he, uh, yeah, like you said, he still has control of the club. Now, that now means that he can, apparently what he said as well in his statement was that uh, he's stepping down so that he can concentrate on somebody to come into the club. Um, However, I'm really worried for Scumfort fans, hugely worried for them. And it's 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 a concern. Um, so, as I was going to say, so on Saturday, what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to do our first ever lower league on tour. I'm going to do a vlog 
I'm going to meet some Scumfort fans. I'm going to have a listening to th- their views. And the one thing that we got from the Scumfort podcast was that we didn't go into too much depth about other conversations that we potentially could have done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give uh, a fair few of their fans uh, a bit of airspace and where they're able to talk about how they feel about the club. Now, I do want to stress as well, we are not on anybody's side here. What we are trying to do is let sure that fans are able to have their voice and talk about things. We are not going to be going, or I'm not going to be there to um, cascade Peter Swan. That is not my, that's not what I'm doing that for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to some Scumfort fans. And if you, if you want to meet me, I meet, I'm starting at the Royal in Scunthorpe at 11 o'clock, meeting a couple of people. Um, I'd love to get your views. I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you, but please don't think that this is an anti Peter Swan thing because it's not, I want to, I want to, but I still want to give you guys the voice because the media has not given you the voice and that's what we want to do. Simple as that. Five to three. If he's starting at 11, Grant, five to three is just going to be a vlog of Chris stood on the bonnet of Peter Swan's car. <laughs> Smash. It's Hugh McCauley. Now, so, so part of the statement... I mean, and, I, then, I, and I, then, then half past three is going to be him getting huckled out of the, the stadium in a pair of handcuffs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll tell you what, if we do... Uh, I'd love to say in handcuffs, I could I could vlog that, but I won't be able to. So, <laughs> be a camera behind your back like that. Hello. We're not gonna, we, we won't get any footage. That camera will oh, just be destroyed. It'll be gone, won't it? But no, <laughs> the, one one part of the, or the, the the part of the statement, I think that there's a there's a line at the end, and he just says, "I have given everything. I know how I have come up short." And I think what you've just said there, Chris, about us not wanting to take sides. The the reason we're doing this is because. Yes, he's come up short. It shouldn't have got to this stage before someone stepped in. It shouldn't yeah. have been allowed to happen. No, and I, that's what I, this I, is. Mm-hmm. Stop this happening later down the line because something needs to change. It's not going to change if people are sat quiet. I, I, I completely agree. And and it's and this is the reason why I want to do it. I mean, it, it helps that I'm in Lincolnshire that weekend anyway. So um I just want to meet some Scumfoot fans. I've, I've got a few that I'm meeting. I'm not going to mention their names on here, uh, just because I don't. But 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 listen, if if the club thinks that I'm going to try and cause tr- trouble, I'm not going to do that. That's that's not our intentions as a podcast. What our intentions as a podcast is to let people have a voice, and that's why I'm doing it. That's why I'm going to do it, and uh, it's going to be interesting. I I, I I won't lie to you. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to see, meeting some of them. Uh, some of the fans, and it should be good. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Grant, I thought you had something you wanted to say. Yeah, I thought you had something. <laughs> hey, you no, I was just going to say. Um, speaking of cunts, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Scunthorpe. Um, what about McCurdy? No, I don't want to talk about it. Why don't you want to talk about McCurdy? Because you know why? Do you want to know why, right? I know what you're getting at. We've seen now where he's been fined. What's he been fined? A thousand pounds for bringing the game into disrepute. Because after the Bradford game, he wrote on a post about the referee, see you next Tuesday. But he hadn't been questioned or fined for right. Like he wrote, see you, and then the words next Tuesday. So we know what he was getting at. But you've got to be able to prove that, I suppose. And he was playing the next Tuesday. That was his next game. He openly on a post wrote, Bradford's a shithole, I want to go home. And no one said no about that. He's got away with that. That's fine. <laughs> but so, so he can't he can't upset one little ref, but he can he can just slag off a you know yeah. whole saying you, nah, you, you, you can't call a ref. You can't call a ref a cunt. You can't, you can't. And you can't call him a clown. Yeah. You can't call him a fat bastard. I mean, let's like, face it. This is all in the John Yem's uh, fucking dictionary book you know like the words that you can't say because you're going to get done for um i kind of get it you, when it comes to referees you, you, can't, you can't get done but i mean like i get it but then again uh if I, we I, I, no 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 I, i'll tell you what liam I, I think that if you start outlawing that 
No, no, no one is. You're going to have fans that are literally going to have it. So you're going to have players that have that template, which most of them do, that will say, sorry for the result, we go again. All that bullshit. But the thing is I like about him is he's very personable. And, um, yeah, you might hate him. You might hate it. You might absolutely hate it. But you know what? At least he says what he thinks. Um, And if he played for your club, as we've said to you, we'd, we'd absolutely love him at City. Have um, you seen him? Have you seen the guy? Does he look like he thinks much at all? He don't look like he's got two brain cells to rub together. He knows that his feet move automatically, but he don't. He, there's, there's no going on up here. Oh, Do you know what? This boils my piss, right? You saying have you seen him? Yes. Do you know what? Do you know what? I have fucking seen him, right? Do you know where I see him on every bastard and Swindon fans profile picture on Twitter? Mm. It's they just a picture of fucking no, but it's not them. It's no one else. It's yeah, just but, a picture of fucking McCarthy. But you know why? Oh, you know why? Does my just, but the, but you know what? He's. Do you know what? But the thing is, he talked. Do you know what? I, 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 I laughed when he put the thing about Bradford because he knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew that you know they'd got the three points at City. He knew how much that he'd rile up City fans. He knew exactly what he was doing. And we talked about it before. We talked about you know you Kevin Elliotsons who wind up every single club that he goes to, whatever. And McCurley's just doing the same. He's doing the exact McCurley. same thing. McCurley. He's doing the exact McCurley. same thing. McCurley. McCurley. <laughs> uh, Kevin Ellison, yeah, Jennifer's dad. Oh, anyway. Remember Jennifer and Ellison. Yeah, Jennifer Ellison. Right, yeah, so, I'm guys. Sorry, that face. <laughs> uh, yeah. So... One thing, right, the, the last thing, and I'm not saying point, the last thing on the chairman of Scully, Peter Swan. Ooh, rewind. We're not right. moved on from this, no? No, because it's something I wanted to mention. Maybe everyone's just misunderstood him. Because when he came in, he said, I will get you out of League One. And he did. He's then said, I will get you out of League Two. And he is. Anyway. He never said what direction, on. guys. He moving just said, I'll on. get you out of them. He's moving got on. them out. Don't get me banned from the ground <laughs> before I go Listen, there, please. He's <laughs> all get me banned. Up. genius, and he sticks to his word. <laughs> I mean, the National yeah. League's a competitive league, isn't it? So It is, don't, to be fair. Don't it's a get me banned from the ground. Two, so. Don't get <laughs> me get you banned from the ground. Don't do it already. Chris, are you getting in as a child? Are you going at child prices or are you, are you paying a full adult? I'm actually not paying for my ticket. Someone's actually paying for my ticket. So. Are they paying for a concession? I mean, has they got like a little height? Have they got one of those height stands that you hold go... On, hold on. Grant says this, right? Just to make sure that everybody is aware of this. Everybody, everybody <laughs> thinks that Grant is a giant. I'm not Grant a giant! Tiny as F. Mate, you're not even allowed on Nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know what? I've been to towers with him as well. I've been to towers with him. <laughs> Luckily, because my forehead's that big, it just gets me on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on, boys. Moving you're on. Like, you're only like, yeah, yeah, honestly, with, if we, if we his, weren't ripping on, on you guys, he's par with his balar. <laughs> If we, if we weren't ripping on each other tonight, <laughs> this podcast would only be 20 minutes long because not much has happened in League Two. But so we, who's winning the league? We've said Forest Green earlier in the season. Then it sort of went a bit tits up for him. Tomorrow night is probably one of the more clear indicators, or it's the first <clears> game that we've got this season between Forest Green and Mansfield. It's massive, and I, I for one, can't wait to, to see what happens there. Um, Forest Green played Scunny on Saturday, 1 1 0. Very scrappy game. They, they, they're still scraping results, mm-hmm. but they're struggling against teams they should be walking over really struggling against teams they should be walking over and they're not the convincing team they were earlier in the season I reckon Mansfield take them tomorrow night I'd I'd love to see it but we're, you know what do you guys think I, th- I think uh, I think you hit the nail on the head is, is the fact that you know they, they only just scraped to 1-0 victory against Scunthorpe um, I think that's Concerning, I think Mansfield will do them it tomorrow. I really do. Uh, Mansfield again. I've said this for all of our podcasts. I've said that they are going up. They are going up. They're, there's no doubt about it. 
Um, interestingly, obviously they beat Northampton at the weekend. I was saying that you know we've mentioned before about Northampton. In fact, we haven't really talked about Northampton, but we talked about there's there's nothing that... to talk about there's with Northampton. Talk about. No, yeah. Even the people that live there don't want to talk about Northampton. Yeah, but that we is... talk about you know the Ooh. fact that they've got probably the well they have got the biggest team in uh, League Two, but. Um, I was talking to Gab, who Gab, who came on a couple of weeks ago. I mentioned to him about Northampton. He said, "Well, actually, I'm not that impressed with Northampton, which they're dull. They're so dull to watch. Even when we get beat by them, they were so dull. Everything's just dead ball plays, and they just play to that height. It's awful to watch. But they've always done that as well. This isn't. This isn't a." And a team that's been built at Northampton, and this is how they play. This has always been the way. We played them at Wembley, didn't we, Chris? Two thousand and thirteen, and that's all they did. We it was twenty seven minutes into the game, three nil. We it was game. They over. were massive, they, and they were they were and huge. They were huge yeah. well. mm-hmm. they They've were... always been a big, dominant physical side. Yeah, but there's just nothing about. I, I don't look at them and see any redeeming features. I don't I, look at them and go, I'd love to have that guy or I'd love to... I don't see it. Yeah, I think that I, they've got 11 players that you can get carbon copies of everywhere. I mean, Gab, Gab, Gab was saying that he was at Mansfield on Saturday and he just said that I really wasn't impressed with Mansfield. Uh, sorry. Uh, Northampton, 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 sorry. Shut up. Stop catching me out. <laughs> um, he said he really... I, I, I'll be honest, he did surprise me a little bit. I thought that, you know, I, I still think that they're, I don't know. Do you know what? This league, i tell you what, I'm enjoying as well. Is I'm going to go on a little bit of a different tangent, but not really. Is that so many people and so many betting companies or whatever on Twitter are starting to realise how bloody close it is at the top of, mm-hmm. top of League Two. And it's incredible. What season? I mean, even like we're talking about the team at the top of the table, we're still going. Are they going to win the top of the you know top of the league? Two months ago, from they were 15, third. 20 points ahead. You look from third to eleventh. There's five points in it. It's yeah. crazy. What a league! You know, and I think the, the the reason that they're picking up on it now is because every other league, you've now got a clear front runner. And you've yeah. got you, you sort of you've got an idea of who's going to be roughly where within one or two positions in every other league. This league you don't, and it genuinely is probably the best mm-hmm. league in the country this season. It um, is, there's no doubt about it. There is, it is. It would be mean, nice to, come, to turn up for it. To come back on the original question, I, I'm sticking with what I said last week. I still think Mansfield are going to win this league. I um, I think Mansfield win at the weekend. And an absolutely massive, massive factor I am um, on that is that Matty Stevens is out for the rest yeah. of the season. Can we talk about yeah. that, guys? Can we so talk about ACL that? injury picked up. I am, um, and it was announced today. I am um, on Forest Green's Twitter. That he's going to face a lengthy spell on the sidelines after picking up an ACL injury on Saturday after a pref- prolific campaign. Scoring 27 goals in all competitions. His focus now turns to making a full recovery. So, I mean, I think they can say goodbye to Matty Stevens for the rest of the season, which is going to be massive. I mean, they've still got Jamil Matt, who is the they first have. top goal scorer in the league. We, we, but we he's not making well. the impact. We, we picked up on it, Chris, didn't we, on, on Saturday, because we were in the live chat. We picked up on the... Stevens had gone off after 15 minutes. Yeah. And I remember saying to you, Stevens has gone off. It's been yeah. 15 minutes. And we were like, there's gotta be a there's gotta be summer. Um it's a that's you you lose your best player. It, it, it is, happen. it is. But when you think about when uh, I think it was Sean, was it Sean the Forest Green fan? Yeah. Uh, he came on and he talked about Josh March and he said that he's very unlucky not to get in that first team now. Josh March has a a really big opportunity to um, show what he's about. So, you know, obviously he's a massive loss, huge loss. With an ACL, yeah, he's out for the season. There's there's no doubt about it. But Josh March now has the opportunity to come in and um, reinvigorate them because the thing is they, you know, their forwards have not been 
I've not done really anything for a couple of months. So it'll be interesting to see whether that 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 yeah that that sorts the club out, whether that that helps them, that gets them their back, you know, gets them back to what they need to be. He's got to be. Um, he's got to be up to speed. As well, now is not the time. He, yeah, he can't be coming in and taking two or three games to get to get up to speed. They're gonna be in trouble. On Forest Green, um, has anyone seen the news about Dale Vince? No. Few days. So he's stepped down as CEO of Eco Yeah, um, to pursue a career in politics. Now. Well, that's at just what, killed this. At what stage do you think... He says for now he plans to keep Forest Green, but at, at what stage, as that team gets further and further uh, you know, ahead in its journey, at what stage does it become too much for him to handle if he's now focused elsewhere? I think it's fair to say that Vince Dale has... Um, Dale Deal vent. Whatever. Same thing. <laughs> Two first um, names, isn't it? <laughs> Two first names. He's he's a very good businessman. I, I I'm sure that he's already thought about this. You know, he'll have somebody in the, you know, maybe he's still the owner, but he just doesn't take the decisions that he needs to do. You know, that that will probably happen. To be honest, I don't see that being a huge issue. I really don't. Maybe not now. I think he's I got think I will. think he's got a clear vision. And I think this is what Chris was alluding to. He's got a clear vision of where he wants to take Forest Green Rovers, where he sees them going. Um, he didn't take them all. He didn't put money into them, is my understanding, at the very, very start. He just took them as essentially, yeah, I'll, I'll take on the club as something to do. Um, I think he's got a clear vision of where he wants to go with them and he'll have something in mind. He's, he's not yeah. stupid. Can I also oh, mention yeah. another thing that we need to mention as well? Some, you know, I, I was getting a lot of abuse on Twitter was that um, people think because he's got tons of money, which he probably has, I don't know, I don't know what his estimated figure is, that he's pumped in loads of money this season to to, to them. He hasn't at all. Um, they've one thing that Forest Green have managed to do is keep the same players. Um, I think it when when it came to the agents fees uh 55 think, grand which was about half like mid table 12th I think Bradford was something like 112 like, was it Bristol Rovers I think we were third or second we were yeah, yeah. Bristol so I've got it I've actually got it here just now okay. so of course yeah you, you know why he has you know why he's got it you know why he wants to bring it up and you know why he wants to talk about because no, we no, all know it's, where it's, fucking it's Hartlepool not. are no. on that list I mean, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna bring, I wasn't gonna bring that up. To be fair, I was gonna just talk yes, about the top were. three spenders being, <laughs> uh, Bristol Rovers and one hundred and nineteen or nearly one hundred and twenty, then Salford one hundred and sixteen, and then Bradford one hundred and eight and a half. I must say, I'm surprised that Bristol Rovers have spent more than Salford. I was just gonna say exactly the same thing. I'm surprised Salford aren't a lot higher. Yeah, um, it's that's. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think again. Now you mention it, yeah, Hartlepool have where have spent the, the least amount and on ten thousand, but a lot of that is down to us keeping the vast majority of our squad from a, last season. And this is the thing, and like um, I, I remember there was, like I said, there was a debate and people going, "Oh, Forest Green, no wonder they're there because they've got loads of money." Well, actually, their owner might, but actually, they've they've put the money into. You know, and we've talked about it before about the you know the new ground, the new facilities, and everything. They've spent that on the right. I think for me personally, the right areas that they need to, especially with how good the football team is. You know, I, I hate agents, right? Yeah, I, I genuinely don't like agents. I um, I think the agent setup is wrong in football. I um, I don't think the club should be paying an agent. Yeah, I think I think the players should be paying the agent to find yeah, them a club. Pay, pay them, yeah, pay them to find. I um, yeah. to find yeah. to find your club. Not not the club to find the player. The club pays the player. The player should pay the agent. Would this drive contracts up and costs for players? Probably it would. 
Um, so you'd probably get a similar sort of cost. Mm. But I th- that's how I think it should be. Um, I think if a player wants to play for a club, they would go and play for a club. They shouldn't have an agent touting them going, oh, we can. you can go to Salford, you can get X amount of money, you can go here, you can get X amount. It drives this money-led thing, and we see it at the top, top levels of football We are. <laughs> Rayolas, and it just becomes silly. Grant, I, I think, I've got yeah. a real vendetta against for agents Grant, in football. I think on the flip side, I think I, I get, and to be honest with you, I ain't going to disagree with you on that one, and I completely do agree with you, but a football football career can be very, very short. You know, you look at players from like maybe the 70s, 80s, 60s, earlier than that, when they finished their footballing career, they had to go into a new profession, which you still do to a certain extent. You still do um, in these leagues. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, you know, if you, you're paying for an agent to bring, you know, you've had a really good season somewhere and your agent then goes, well, I'll tell you what, I've managed to get you an extra grand a week. You ain't going to be, you know, that player is probably... Well, they could be they could be really thick. They could be really thick and go, who oh, will take this? But you know that an agent will sort out all of those details. And yes, they're gonna take a snip of that. Um but I think it's a very I, I don't know. I, I why should I get, they play that I, though? Dude, I'm with you. I honestly I am completely with you on, on the agents. I do, I completely agree. However, um there's the opportunity. There's the opportunity to get a bit more money. Why not? I don't, I don't personally. I don't think outside of you know your big big clubs and you know your elite. I don't see why they need agents. I, I really don't see why someone in League Two needs an agent. It's, it's essentially a, you know they're, they're working class players. They're not. They're not earning thousands and thousands think- and thousands of pounds a week. I think. We know who the players are in League Two. You know, you're able to see it. If the fans can recognise a player in League Two and go, they would work for us, a club can contact that player directly. They don't need an agent. It's, it's I think ridiculous. to care for the player and to look after the player and give them guidance, yes. But this is this Do you is where think that that's be. what they're doing, though? Do you, that's what do you they should think they... be doing. That's what yeah. the agent should be doing. And if... this is why the player should be paying for the agent. For yeah. that service that they offer them, yeah, I feel not the clubs hemorrhaging money, yeah. which a lot of clubs can't afford to pay a fucking you, agent. You, pay, you the, at it. pay the players, give the players a bit more. The players agree a percentage with an agent. They get the fee. They position them to a club. Do you know what'd be great? Do you know? I tell what. I tell you what'd be great is to get an agent online and just see what why they do what they do. You know, get them on this you know, on this podcast uh, and talk to them about why they do what they do. And and, and let's listen to the reasoning. I, I think that, I think that we probably don't see a lot of the, the day-to-day stuff. I mean, you talked about Ryona, right? Ryona. That's his Riola, name? Yeah. Riola. Uh, we talk about him, but it'd be interesting to just have that conversation with someone who's an agent and just see, you know what, 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 what they do, and and why you know, especially in this league, why they feel that the club needs to pay for them. Uh, anyway, that's I, think, I could go on. I said I could go on all night about that. Just um, to, to sort of bring Grant's point in there, where he said about the players paying mm-hmm. and the agents looking after the player. If an agent is being paid by a player a certain percentage he is going to look after that player more because he is going to make sure that player gets the best deal for that player. If I'm an agent, and let's say I I have a player I'm trying to position at a League Two club, and I'll use our clubs as an example, Bradford offered to pay me £10,000 for the player, Hartlepool offer me £1,000, and they're both the same wage, I know where I'm pushing my guy. Yeah, you know, and this mm-hmm. is the thing. I know where that guy's going to end up. He's, I'm going to s- not slag Hartlepool, but I'm going to position that Hartlepool offer in such a way that it doesn't look as attractive as the Bradford yeah. offer because yeah. to me it isn't. Whereas if that player is earning, let's say, two grand a week at either club, and the percentage has been agreed, I'm going to earn the, the right amount of money regardless, the same amount. So for me, I'm going to put him in the best position for him, and and I think that's what 
Grant's getting at there. Like, no, no, I, I'm not listening. Not, I'm not, yeah. I'm not no, listening. No, I'm not saying, yeah, with I, I think that's an interesting. It's an interesting thing to to talk about. Before we move on, you mentioned Dale Vince. I just want I did a Google did a little Google while you were talking about his money. He's got less money than what our owner has. He's worth about 100 million, which looks like it's, it's less than what our owner's worth. Um, you know, you, you can only go on reported figures and things, but yeah, 100 million. He's going to be worth a hell of a lot more when he steps down as the uh, the CEO because it looks like he's, it looks from what I'm reading here, he's selling the company. Um, and that company turns over a lot of money. So he's probably going to make, he's, I mean, there's a potential if he does sell, looking at the amount of money they make, he, he could become the richest owner in League One, League Two, or and one of the richest in the championship, he could be worth an absolute fortune. But he may not if he's not in it for the money and he just wants to make sure the right person comes in, then he's probably not going to sell it for that stupid amount. It's we 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 know he's got different sort of he's got a different ethos. I don't I don't he's think he I don't think he would sell the club to uh, yeah, I think that because of the not the club, sorry, his his company, his okay, other he company. Well, the thing yeah, is, yeah. With electricity is that it is a um, uh, it's electric company, but it's all on kind of uh, it's all renewable. It, yeah, yeah. So that that's what he does. That's what he's done from day one. Um, but when when it comes to Forest Green, I don't believe that he would sell them to anyone. I think that he probably will stay in charge of them. Um, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it, it's, it's got to fit the model. Absolutely, yeah. Eco Tricity turns over three hundred million pound a year. Mm-hmm. That's, that's that's a lot of money. But you know, we'll see what happens. Let's you know, let's not let's not dwell on it. We, it's all obviously all speculation. He has announced that he's he's stepping down from that company. What will happen with Forest Green? I guess we'll see. But let's let's look at the next seven days, starting with Forest Green. Forest Green, Grant. You guys have got them this weekend. Yeah, it's a dead robber for us, isn't it? <laughs> it's away, isn't it? As well, ah, it's away for a screen. <laughs> Our players don't look like they care anymore. Um, season's finished for them. But on the flip side, that season, it's not just that the season's finished. We've had probably one of the longest seasons. I am um, out of anyone. Hartlepool had a three-week break in the summer. I am um, between from getting to the playoff final to the start, so it was really, really short turnaround. We've had a long FA Cup run. We got to the semi-final um, of the Pizza Cup, and the players look like they've had that long time. Dead rubber for Hartlepool. I can't see this going any other way than a Forest Green win. No. And you've not got a long pre-season this time either. <laughs> No, but I mean, it's it's longer than the last one. Two it's seconds. longer than try the last one. To, try to find my dog toy because my dog's being an arse. <laughs> Grant, Grant doesn't have a dog. It's an imaginary friend. Guys. <laughs> yeah. Every week we have the, We've never seen a dog. No. Um, I, I drove, a dog. I, the thing is, I've heard about this dog so many times. I drove Grant to his house the other week and the dog wasn't there when I got there. So, yeah. you know, I don't know if it exists or not. Um, I I would say that I actually think Hartlepool are going to win that. I think that Mansfield are going to... Oh, famous last words. I think Mansfield are going to really batter Forest Green tomorrow night. I think that Hartlepool could cause uh, a bit of an issue. I'd say upset, but well, maybe an upset for Forest Green. I think Molyneux is still out as well. Uh, I think Molyneux is still injured. Grant, we, we've spoke. Uh, I wanted to. I wanted to talk about Hartlepool as well because you've you've mentioned about Omar Bogle. Mm-hmm. He's done nothing the last month, has he? Yeah, no. he's, he's scored. He's scored four goals since he signed for you. He's, he's he came in. In fairness, he got turn. he got Player of the Month yeah, on yeah. his first month when he came in. His first month, he was fantastic. Um, and he looks like he's just coasting along just now. It looks like they they know that there's nothing for them to play. There's yeah, nothing to that's, play for now. That's what I think. Um, but he's made 14 appearances and four goals. Now that yeah. isn't a good. And they all came at the very start. Yeah, they did. He's not scored in in a in a while now. Which, yeah. yeah, I mean, we'll and he did next season. Last two games I've watched him in, he didn't look like he was going to score either. He just looked very average. Yeah. It just looks like he's, he's there just now. I think. Yeah. Yeah, it just, as do, I think as do most of the players. I think they, yeah. they look tired and they look like they're just there. 
Yeah, but I think I think we we looked like that on Saturday, Chris. We we looked like we were just going through the motions, fulfilling a fixture. Um, yeah, we had, we hadn't talked about it. Um, I predicted two I nil before the game, two one to Bristol Rovers. Um, yeah, it, it wasn't yeah. good. No. But sorry, right, we go again because on Saturday we have Northampton. <laughs> the biggest team in the league. The, we are yeah. going to the dullest Lake place Lake. in the football league. We are going to the most dull We're going ground. To six fields. I've never had a nice experience at six fields. No, I, I have been bored out of my skull every time I've been yeah, there. Yeah, I've, I've been there. I've been there a few times and I've hated it. Yeah, I think I think Northampton are going to take it. I do. Um, yeah. I'd be shocked if they didn't because, like you say, it's, there's not much for us to play for and. I think uh, someone mentioned about our. I think it was yourself, actually, because you mentioned on a, on another. I think on the city event, you said about um, us having some youth players um, and yeah. us not seeing them. Yeah, I, I I think there's you know the one thing is that um, our youth teams are doing reasonably well. There's a couple of players that are coming through that I'd like to see embedded. Um, or even just off the bench, just to see what they're like. I, I you know, I, I think that we possibly potentially have some of the best youth players we've had for a long time, and that's what we need to do. Anyway, we're not going to yeah. talk about City too much. Is, I do, I do think it is th- this time of the season now for clubs like Bradford, Hartlepool, Crawley, Orient. Yeah, it's time to, to maybe start Walsall bed in. Some young players who maybe haven't had the opportunity to get games to give them into the squad to go. Look, here you go. This is your taste of first team football. I agree. Let's see how you go. You have a real chance here to break into the first team next season or break into the bench next season. Here's yeah. your opportunity. Grab it by the balls. Yeah, I think I think we'll see it in the next few weeks. I think the reason we've not seen it is because we changed manager, and I think he needed to see the first team and have a look at. Where what his plans are for next season? Um, mm. I think if we'd not changed manager, then we possibly would have seen a, a youth player or two coming through at at some stage by now. But um, I do I do think you know we've we've got to trust that he knows what he's doing and that he knows what he's looking for. So yeah, I think I think the next few weeks we may see some youth players come in across all teams, and it'd be nice to see it'd be nice to see that little fresh faces that are coming in and maybe a bit of excitement brought to match days rather than just going through the motions. But we'll see. Other game then. Stevenage, I know they're at the bottom, but they play Mansfield. Mansfield, yeah. Forest Green tomorrow night, then they've got to play Stevenage. And for me, I don't see that going any way other than Mansfield. Well, I mentioned the Steve Evans effect. I'm still waiting for this Steve Evans effect. Uh, Nate, as far as I'm concerned, this is the Steve Evans effect. He's done nothing since 2014. <laughs> this is what's this is Steve Evans. Nah, this you, is what this is who he is. You can't say that because Gillingham, he took him to what was it eighth eighth in League One. Um, he from a team that like literally had the lowest budget or one of the lowest budgets in the league. Um, he did do a good job at Gillingham. There's there's the for me, there's no doubt about that. There's only one bounce that Steve Evans is doing right now. Is that down this down? He's like fuck it, yeah. It's down to KFC, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, you, 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 I, mean I can hardly Gillingham talk. There. But no, we're picking out Gillingham there. But you know, since 2014, he's managed Leeds and failed. He's managed Mansfield and failed. He's managed he didn't Kingsborough. actually fail at Leeds, though. To be fair, because he he actually the job was to keep them uh, keep them afloat, and he did. Uh, he managed to do that because I think it was where he had the Hawaiian shirt on, and the uh, he said that if I could keep Leeds up, I will wear an Hawaiian suit, you know, like Hawaiian hat and everything. And he did do that. Um, other than that, yes, he did terrible. Um, I wouldn't say that he's done horrendous personally I don't think he has Gillingham like I said Gillingham last I think it was last year or the year before they were about eighth they were very much into the the uh, playoff contention um I don't think it's fair to say that he's not done really anything since then well I mean you, you look at it so when he when he left Leeds there's a pattern here he left Leeds saying that he was in talks with the club in China 
which never materialised. He then signed for Mansfield. He then left Mansfield saying that he wanted to go and work in China. He did terrible. Um, he did terrible at Mansfield. I'll give you he that. He did. But I, what I think the point I'm getting at is Steve Evans is no longer the guy that I feel you look to bring in to make an impact. No, I mean it's like it's like uh, Jose Mourinho, isn't it? You d- you don't look at you know a lot of clubs got in Jose over the last five years and Jose is not the manager he was 15 years ago you know he's doing all right at Roma yeah he's for he is phenomenal well, this season. well yeah but do you know what other than that anyone, anyone who can get Tammy Abraham scoring nearly 30 goals a season <laughs> it's got a it's... well yeah it has to be because I'll tell you what, <laughs> I need 500 chances got anyway that's not league yeah. two, but anyway, it is. But but still, I get the I get what you mean. Like the, the days are behind him, and I think you know things have changed. Steve Evans not not the man he used to be. I think Mansfield will walk it comfortably. Oldham, you mentioned they've got Vale. Um, I if I was Port Vale, Port Vale conceded against Barrow, didn't they? They actually conceded to Barrow. They did. Um, Phil Brown's boys scored a goal. Phil Brown's boys scored a goal. I, 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 I that as well. I that was probably the only result I got right this weekend, actually. Yes. We get a two-one. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to. If I, I wouldn't want to come up against Oldham this weekend. Nah, I no, I really wouldn't. Oldham know that Mansfield are going to Stevenage. Um, Mansfield have a game in hand on. Sorry, Stevenage have a game in hand on Oldham. So, yeah. and, that, and that game in hand is Mansfield, isn't it? It, it is the Mansfield yeah, game because it was the one where he came in and he got called off for COVID. Yeah. Oldham have got a chance to to put themselves six ahead. Um, yeah, no. So I, I think Oldham have got it. I do think they have. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, Exeter, Carlisle. Obviously, Exeter. Up there, third, I think they are third or second. Can't lose, can't lose at the minute. So can't lose at the minute. Carlisle can. Second, second. Yeah, Carlisle can lose, um, and they have done. They've, 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 that that little run that they put together seems to be. Exeter, are this one team that I've got, I think, have a firm, firm foothold in an automatic position. Yeah, I'm... yeah. I I agree. I think that they're going to finish second, no matter who. You know, if it's Mansfield who win the league. They're going to finish second, without a doubt. And lastly, Bristol Rovers and Tranmere. Now that is a big game for for uh, for us to be talking about here. Bristol, Bristol Rovers, Rovers. Tranmere. Tram- Tranmere look, we we've got to hold our hands up and say Tranmere are the absolute bottle jobs of the season. Yeah, and that's why I think Bristol yeah. Rovers will win that. I I I, I hope they do. Um, I would I, also I really agree. Hope they do, but we'll see. Like I said, Tranmere. What has gone on? How? Uh, bear in mind when we played them, we went to the game. Chris, when was it? We went to it. Was it November? Yeah, yeah. We went to the game. Tranmere, Tranmere were a bit low us. Then they went on that run and they were second. They were awful then, as well. They weren't that good. Yeah, they weren't. And now the seventh, like they, that is up and then back down. And mm. you know the, the the one point away. Well, put it this way: you, you look at uh, Salford, Swindon, Sutton are all within three points of Tranmere and they all have a game in hand. I was yes. going to say, because Salford this weekend defense. Salford this weekend have Harrogate. You would fancy Salford against Harrogate to keep them in the mix as well. Tranmere could be out of the playoffs by the end of Saturday and I, I think they will be. I, I, yeah, I really think they will be. Um, they, they'll be... I mean, if that happens, we need to look to get a Tranmere fan on. Uh, but guys, that's, that's it for the next seven days. Um, anyone got anything else they want to add? Fantastic. No. <laughs> oh, here he goes. He's got his finger up. He's got something he wants to add. No, he's I pointing don't. at you. He's I'm pointing, pointing at you. At you at oh, but I thought you were saying you had something. I no, I'm pointing at you. Pointing at me. Pointing at me. Firstly, do it what? properly. Oh, do go. it properly, not like <clears throat> what we had at the Scumfort special. Just um, actually compose myself for a second here. Everyone. Everyone. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? I was so firstly thinking you're Scott Hall, and now you're doing the mad Scott people's Hall. eyebrow. Is it not a Scott Hall thing? Yeah, just no, get on with he it. probably did it at once on. in his Come life. On, just get he on probably it. did. By it the way, point. by the way, rest in peace, Scott Hall. Rest in peace, indeed, Scott Hall. Indeed. All... Right. Me. Yeah. Right. Everyone, thank you very much for listening once again. We appreciate every single one of you listening to us. 
I am especially all the new folks that have came along from the Scunny special. We hope you guys continue to listen. Just way up. We will get part two recorded coming up. I'm hopefully within the next couple of weeks to get the saga wrapped up that's going on within Scunthorpe. Don't forget, like us on Facebook, comment on our post, tell us what you thought of the podcast. What would you like to hear? Send your stories in. We've not had any new stories earlier on, so send them into the mailbox on Facebook. Send it into our mailbox on Twitter. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Share the posts. Everyone, like it, share it, follow us. Subscribe to us on Spotify or any other podcast app that you listen to us on. Service, app, I don't know, what would you call it? One of the two. Spotify, comment, whatever the hell you want. Call us all complete wankers. We don't care, just rate us five stars. That's what matters to us. Join us on our Discord. We have chat every single match day. But usually one of us are on. There's a couple other guys that come on regularly. It's good fun. Nice community that we're building up on Discord as well. And you might get a couple of little extras to, to the chance to have a wee chat with us. It's good fun. We enjoy it. We don't bite, apart from um, he bites sometimes. He bites more. Anyway, guys, thanks once again. We have been Lower League Look. And I'm just going to say... I am also going to say, don't forget to see me at Scunthorpe on Saturday and let's have a chat. Mansfield fans as well, come and have a chat with me. I'm going to be there. The back of, he'll be in the back of the police van outside the ground. I will. From 3 p.m. onwards. I will be. Give this dick trying to get the last word in. I Go Scunny. Go Scunny. Anyway. See him. Don't get him too pissed. Take he care. Talk- yes. He starts talking oh. shit. He starts if talking you- shit when he gets pissed. If he and he opens his own. Take his drink and his vlogging equipment off him. He opens. He opens his own Twitter space. Bye. 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 Bye.